Hello and welcome to Truth For Today with Pastor Richard Whitcomb. My name is Pastor Gabriel Jima and it's my pleasure to present this webcast. In today's episode of Truth For Today, Pastor Whitcomb continues his sermon series called How To Predict Your Future with a fifth sermon entitled Your Life In 10 Years. In this series, Pastor Wilcom presents principles you need to know about predicting your future and how you can successfully plan today so that you can succeed tomorrow. I invite you to watch and listen to him as he presents the fifth sermon of this series entitled Your Life in 10 Years. There's no doubt that Colin Kroll was a technical genius. When he was just a junior high school student, he taught himself how to code in multiple programming languages. When he was in senior secondary school, he figured out a way to hack into the internet provider in his community. He blocked all the internet for his neighbors so that he could get faster internet for himself. His father knew then that Colin was going to do something great with his skill. And that's exactly what Colin did. He moved to New York City when he was just 23 years old and started working for tech companies. Then, in 2012, he co-founded Vine, the video hosting service. Five months later, Twitter bought Vine for 30 million U.S. dollars. And just like that, Colin Kroll was a millionaire. He was successful, smart, and living the good life. He had money, fame, power, and all the pleasure he could handle. But what Colin Kroll didn't have was a plan. He didn't have a plan for the future. He didn't have a plan for his legacy. He did not have a plan for his next 10 years. He lived in the moment, but never prepared for tomorrow. He focused on his will, but never thought about God's will. And Colin Kroll discovered what we all will discover eventually. A successful start doesn't guarantee a successful end. And so it was that on December 16th, 2018, Colin Kroll died alone from a drug overdose. A little over 10 years after launching his career in New York City, Colin Kroll, multimillionaire, tech genius, famous entrepreneur, died at age 34. The fact is you may have talent, intelligence, and wealth. You may make a name for yourself, and everyone predicts your never-ending success. But if you don't plan for the future, you'll end up with a future you didn't plan. That's why today's sermon is so important for all of us. By God's grace, we're going to learn the three decisions you need to make now to ensure a better life tomorrow. But before we go to God's word, let's pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, we thank you that you've gathered us in your presence to learn from your word. Your future plans for us will be accomplished as we listen and learn today. So speak to our hearts. We submit to you now. We bind every voice of the enemy that would come to deceive or disturb or distract us. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I loose the power of the Holy Spirit on every heart watching and listening today. I pray that you will give us light and life and love to obey you. We thank you by faith that you are changing our future today because of what we hear. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. I want to invite you to take a moment and join your faith with mine. Put your hand on your chest and pray after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, speak to my heart. Change my life. Manifest your glory in me. In Jesus' name, amen. God richly bless you, and thank you for joining me today. It's great to have you here with me as we continue our sermon series titled, How to Predict Your Future. For the last four weeks, we've been on a journey to learn the principles of prediction from God's Word. The fact is, we all need to learn how to predict our futures. For when you can see down the road, you can avoid the mistakes and diversions that would keep you from your destination. When you can predict your future, you can plan for what lies ahead. And the good news is that God's word makes it possible for all of us to predict our future. You can't predict every pothole or every bend in the road, but God makes it clear that your direction determines your destination. Your decisions and your actions today dictate your direction. So when you take the time to examine your life and examine your steps, you can come up with a good idea of where you're going. You can learn to predict your future. 
And that brings us to today's sermon. You see, when you know where you're going, you can then start planning for your journey. When you understand the principles of prediction, you can prepare a plan that will deliver you to your destination. Now, to help us discover the truth for today, we've prepared sermon notes. The sermon notes are available free of charge online at my website, on my Facebook page, and on my YouTube channel. I invite you to take out your notes now and follow along with me as we learn three decisions for a better you in 10 years. There at the top of your notes and on your screen in front of you, you'll find our scripture text for today. It's two simple verses from Psalm 37. And today we're reading from the Living Bible. So let's all take a moment to read these verses out loud together. Are you ready? Read it like you mean it. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Don't be impatient for the Lord to act. Keep traveling steadily along his pathway, and in due season, he will honor you with every blessing. For the good man, the blameless, the upright, the man of peace, has a wonderful future ahead of him. For him, there is a happy ending. May the Lord bless the reading of his word to your heart, and may there be a happy ending to your life. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of us want a happy ending to our lives? Well, I think that's the goal for everyone on earth today. If we just knew that it would all end up okay in the end, we could endure whatever disappointments there might be today. If we just knew that in the end, the relationship would be healed, in the end, the goals would be met, in the end, the destiny would be fulfilled, we would be able to rejoice today. But you see, the fact is we all know that the start is important, but it's not as important as the end. We all know that even a bad start is quickly forgotten when the end turns out well. We all know that trials and difficulties in the middle may make life tough, but if the end is happy, then we don't mind what we pass through to get there. We see that very truth in these encouraging verses from Psalms. Verse 34 tells us we have to be patient and that we have to continue steadily on the Lord's path. It encourages us that there is a due season for our blessing. And that's why these verses also give us the steps we can take today to get to that happy destination. You see, hidden inside these verses is the recurring theme of our sermon series. If you want to know your future, look at the process given to us in Psalm 34. The ones who have a happy ending are the ones who follow God's road. The ones who get every blessing from God are the ones who trust in God and walk in his ways. For the truth is, You can look down the road and see your life in 10 years. You can look into your future and predict a happy ending when you know the right road to follow. So today, let's get started in that direction as we learn the three decisions for a better you in 10 years. And here's your first decision today. To get to a better you in 10 years, you need to surrender your will to God's will. Listen to this key portion of our scripture text for today. Keep traveling steadily along his pathway. Everybody say, his pathway. So here's the first fundamental truth we all need to embrace today. God's blessing on your future only comes when you're walking on his road. It's impossible to have a happy ending to your life when you ignore God's will and only seek your own will. For the reality is God has a plan and a purpose for your life. God's plan is what he created you to do. And you will never find true fulfillment or success in this life until you find God's plan for your life and surrender to it. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs 16, 4. The Lord has made everything for his own purpose. Everything, including you, has been created by God for a purpose. So just put your hand on your chest and say, God made me for a purpose. You see, every one of us has a God-given purpose in life. Your God-given purpose in life is simply God's plan for you. It's what God wants you to do and be. And that is true no matter who you are. Whether you're a fully devoted follower of Christ or a half-hearted Christian who only comes to church when you're in trouble, the fact is every one of us finds our purpose in God. That's why Colossians 1.16 says, For everything, absolutely everything, above and below, visible and invisible, everything got started in Him and finds its purpose in Him. 
It's essential that you understand this truth because the fact is God is the only place where you'll find purpose. There's no other place in this life where your life can have meaning or value. There's no other place where you can have significance in life. You may have a lot of plans and goals for your life. You may have mapped out a 10-year plan for where you're going, but it's only God's plan that will bring you fulfillment. It's only when we surrender to God's plan that we can achieve a better future. That's why Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. So the only thing that will prevail, the only thing that will last in this life is what is done to pursue the purposes of God. If you want your life to prevail, you have to surrender your goals to God for God's purposes will always prevail. For the fact is God's power is aligned with God's purpose. God didn't create you to live a life of sinful pleasure. You won't find lasting meaning in life in education or wealth or career or a family or marriage. It's only in Christ that your purpose can be found. That's why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5.10, those who love money will never have enough. How absurd to think that wealth brings true happiness. And that's the lesson we learn from the tragic but true story of a man named Wang Shankun from China. Wang Shankun was just 17 years old when he made a fateful decision to pursue wealth in order to get happiness. Wang was desperately poor and wanted to impress his friends, so he set out to get an iPhone. But since he had no money, Wang decided to sell one of his kidneys. Why do I need a second kidney? One is enough, he said. So Wang made a deal with black market organ harvesters. In April 2011, he underwent surgery to remove one of his kidneys. And with the money he earned from the illegal deal, he was able to buy an iPhone 4 and an iPad 2. Things seemed great at first. His friends all admired him for his new gadgets. He really enjoyed using his new iPhone 4 and iPad 2. But the road leads where the road leads. And Wang's decision cost him dearly. You see, the illegal surgery was performed in an unsanitary condition. There was no good post-operative care for his illegal surgery. And eventually, an infection caused renal deficiency. Wang's one remaining kidney began to fail. Today, Ten years after his fateful decision, Wang is bedridden for life. He's totally dependent on dialysis to survive. His friends, his money, his gadgets are gone along with his life. That's why Proverbs 23, 4, and 5 warns us, don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Be wise enough to know when to quit. In the blink of an eye, wealth disappears, for it will sprout wings and fly away like an eagle. And your purpose in life is not to make money. Your purpose in life is not to enjoy material wealth. I'm not against those things, but that's not purpose. The things you own must not own you. And your life in 10 years won't be better just because you have more things. What good is it to make 10-year goals if you don't live 10 more years? What good is it to chase after things that won't last? There's nothing wrong with making money and being successful in this life. But if that's all you have, your life will fail. For let me make a financial prediction for you today. I can guarantee this prediction with 100% certainty. I may not be known as a prophet, but I'm going to prophesy to you today, and it will come to pass. I cannot predict what the value of Bitcoin will be at the end of this year. I cannot tell you which bank may fail or which investment will earn the most returns, but I can guarantee one piece of financial information. Everyone watching me today will lose every material possession you now own. I prophesy, one day when this life is over, you will lose every material thing you possess right now. I prophesy and it will happen. That's why Ecclesiastes 6.9 admonishes us, enjoy what you have rather than desiring what you don't have. Just dreaming about nice things is meaningless, like chasing the wind. 
If Robert Wood Johnson were here with us today, that's what he would tell us. Robert Johnson was one of the heirs to the vast Johnson and Johnson empire. The Johnson family made billions selling Band-Aids and baby powder. Robert Johnson alone was worth hundreds of millions of dollars, but he died shortly after 6 p.m. on January 30th, 1968, at the age of 74. His last words to one of his nurses before he died were these, and I quote, I have millions of dollars, and I would give everything I have if someone could make me well. That's why David tells us in Psalm 90, 70 years are given to us. Some even live to 80. But even the best years, soon they disappear and we fly away. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow in wisdom. And may the Lord our God show us his approval and make our efforts successful. When you realize that your life is a vapor and that the time you have on earth is a passing shadow, it leads you to the wisdom that can make your time on earth successful. For wisdom teaches us to find and follow what really matters in life, the purpose and plan of God. The fact is, none of us know how long we have to live, but living a successful life is not about how long you live, but how well you live. When your goal is to fulfill God's purpose on earth, you can succeed whether you live 30 years or 100 years. No matter how much time we have, we can fulfill our purpose right now. We can do it every day, for success is not something you chase in the future. Success can be found every day when you live to please the Lord. For Proverbs 3, 6 tells us, in everything you do. Put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. And that brings us to our second decision. Sacrifice now so you can gain tomorrow. Listen again to how our scripture text for today begins. Don't be impatient for the Lord to act. For you see, putting God first and surrendering to his plan requires sacrifice. It requires saying no to what looks good today so you can gain what is truly good tomorrow. It requires giving up what's appealing right now to find what's satisfying 10 years from now. That's why Ecclesiastes 7, 8 says, finishing is better than starting. Patience is better than pride. We can learn that truth from the lesson of the magic penny. Suppose I have a magic penny that doubles in value every single day. My one penny today will become two pennies tomorrow, and my two pennies tomorrow will become four pennies the next day. And because I'm kind and generous, I come to you one day and make you an offer. I can give you one of two choices. You can only choose one. I will give you three million U.S. dollars today, or I will give you my magic penny. Now, the three million U.S. dollars today sounds pretty good. It seems reasonable that most people would choose the three million dollars today instead of a magic penny. After all, with the three million today, I can buy a house, a car, and a whole lot of gadgets. But with a magic penny, most people would assume it would take forever to increase to anything substantial. Even if it doubles in value every day, we think it would take too long before that penny would equal the $3 million. For sure, the $3 million sounds more appealing. But the truth is, the magic penny is a better deal. Even though you have to wait for it to increase in value, it's worth the wait. Let's do some calculations. On day two, my one penny is now worth two pennies. On day three, my two pennies are worth four pennies. By the end of the first week, my magic penny would be worth exactly 64 cents. Wow. That's not very much money. That $3 million looks a whole lot better. In fact, even after three weeks, it still seems like the $3 million is a better deal. On day 21, my magic penny is now worth $10,485.76. That's better than a penny, but still far below the $3 million. 
but my magic penny keeps multiplying. On day 26, it's worth $335,544.32. On day 27, it's worth $671,088.64. On day 28, my magic penny is worth over $1 million. And on day 30, my magic penny has continued to double and double and double, and it's now worth $5,368,800. $7.12. From one penny, I've increased my wealth to over $5 million in just 30 days. In the end, my magic penny is worth far more than the original $3 million. And that's the power of choosing for the long term, not the short term. That's the power of patience. The problem we have in the world today is everybody wants everything now, 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 now. And sadly, this same spirit of impatience has infected the church. We want everything instantly. We want it now. But the truth is God works with time to bring us the reward of our patience. That's why you have to make destination-based decisions. If you choose by the comfort of the road, you would choose the broad way that leads to destruction. But choosing the narrow road now brings you to eternal life. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you today. Your life in 10 years will only be successful if you choose what's satisfying over what's appealing. See, the enemy knows that we can be easily distracted from our destination if he throws something appealing in our path. The things that appeal to our flesh and our emotions and our senses are what capture our attention and divert us from our destination. But what is appealing is not satisfying, and what satisfies doesn't often look appealing. For example, sacrifice doesn't look appealing to any of us, but sacrifice is what is required to gain something better for your future. It looks appealing to buy fancy clothes and expensive gadgets, but it's satisfying to stick to a budget and save money instead. And you can't choose both. It looks appealing to go to parties with friends and enjoy continual entertainment, but it's satisfying to study hard and score well on your exams, and you can't choose both. It may look appealing to leave your children with the nanny while you fly off to Dubai, but it's satisfying to have a relationship with your children and to see them nurtured under your loving care, and you can't choose both. And the fact is, your willingness to sacrifice now will reap rewards in your future. Your willingness to stick to your budget now will reap big rewards tomorrow. Your willingness to stay home and study will reap rewards tomorrow. Your willingness to sacrifice your time to nurture your own children will reap rewards tomorrow. So in order to make a better you in 10 years, you have to connect your first step with your last step. You have to realize that your actions today will directly impact your results tomorrow. That's why Proverbs 27, 12 tells us, the wise see danger ahead and avoid it, but fools keep going and get into trouble. So are you wise or foolish? Are you looking ahead down the road? Do you see trouble and danger? And if so, what steps are you taking to avoid it? The fact is you will never lose your way if you choose the satisfying over the appealing. If you'll sacrifice today, you'll gain a reward tomorrow. If you'll pay the price of patience now, you'll have a better life 10 years from now. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home with you. Your present becomes your past and shapes your future. This year, my wife and I celebrate 38 years living in West Africa. And my mind has gone back to those early days when we lived in a small city called Sapale in Nigeria. I'll be frank, living conditions were not ideal. We lived in a rundown flat off an untarred road with no running water and frequent power blackouts. We drew water from a well and chased off rats. It wasn't appealing at all, but we paid a price and today, we're reaping a reward. 
we have the satisfaction of looking back over a life well lived. And we know that God sees the sacrifices we made and he will reward us. There were a lot of opportunities for us to quit in those early days. We didn't see a lot of results right away, and we faced a lot of challenges. I remember when we opened our first church, we rented a meeting hall at the Okme Local Government Center. We met for our first Sunday service and told everyone, come back next week to this same place. But on our second Sunday, we got to the Okme Local Government Hall and found that the staff had locked us out. Even though we had an agreement and we had paid money, when we got to the hall, they refused to let us in. Our members stood outside with us in the front of the building on our second Sunday. We didn't know what to do or where to go. But God sent a friend to us as we stood outside. My friend had a church up the road, and he agreed to let us use one of their Sunday school rooms for our service. We walked down the street, held our service, and refused to give up. The next week, we met at a school. On our first three Sundays, we met in different locations each week. That's not a good way to start if you want people to find your church. Imagine trying to invite someone to your church. Come to my church next Sunday. Okay, great. Where is it? I don't know. But we persevered. We heeded the words of Psalm 37.4. Don't be impatient for the Lord to act. We sacrificed then so that we could enjoy in the future. And that first church we started in Sapele, Nigeria, is still going today, 38 years later. It now has its own land and building. We didn't give up then, and we won't give up now. Who we are today is a result of what we did yesterday. For the fact is, your present becomes your past and shapes your future. And if you'll sacrifice today and be patient for God to bless you, you'll have a better life in 10 years. That's why Hebrews 6, 11 and 12 tells us, we want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end. In other words, be patient to the end and don't give up. So that what you hope for may be fully realized. In other words, so you can get to the right destination. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. And when you mix faith with patience, you inherit what God has promised. When you sacrifice today, you eventually receive what you hope for. That's why we must heed God's word in Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. Be careful how you live, not as fools, but as those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity for doing good in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but try to understand what the Lord wants you to do. And that brings us to our third truth today. Start today so you can succeed tomorrow. Listen again to the end of Psalm 37, 34. The Bible says, in due season, he will honor you with every blessing. If you want every blessing, say amen. So here's the conclusion to your life in 10 years. If you will follow God's path, he will honor you with every blessing. If you'll surrender to his plan and sacrifice today so you can gain tomorrow, then in the right time, in due season, you're going to reap God's rewards. You're going to see him move in your life so that in 10 years you'll be rejoicing in the blessing and the favor of God. I can predict your future. You can predict your future. If you'll keep traveling steadily along God's path, you have a wonderful future ahead of you. You will have a happy ending. But it doesn't happen unless you start. You have to start today so you can succeed tomorrow. And the longer you delay your start, the longer you will delay your wonderful future. For the longer you wait to begin, the longer you will wait to have a happy ending. So here's my advice to every one of us today. Do what you can do today so you can do tomorrow what you couldn't do today. See, you have to start today to succeed tomorrow. If you don't act now, your life won't be different in 10 years than it is now. You'll be fighting the same battles with the same problems and the same issues. So let me ask you a question. If you could go back 10 years in time, what advice would you give to your younger self? What would you tell yourself 10 years ago so that your life would be better today. Maybe in the last 10 years, you took a job that didn't work out well. If you could travel back in time, you would tell yourself, don't take that job. 
Or maybe you got into a relationship with someone. You invested years of your life in the relationship only to find out too late that he or she wasn't the right person for you. If you could travel back in time, you would tell yourself, don't date that person. If you could travel back 10 years in time, what would you tell yourself? Would you tell yourself, don't sign that contract. Don't buy that land. Here's one thing I would tell myself if I could go back 10 years in time. Spend less, save more. (laughs) I look back now and realize that sometimes I spent money I didn't need to spend. I realize now that sometimes I spent money I didn't have to buy things I didn't need to impress people I didn't like. I spent money going places I didn't enjoy. I spent money buying food I can't remember. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I've even bought some books I've never read. I have them on my shelf in my study. They're great books. They look good on the shelf. They could have helped me. I bought them because I knew I needed the information they contained. If I had read those books 10 years ago, I'd be a better person. I'd have more knowledge, but I didn't read them. I guess I thought if the book was on my shelf, the knowledge would float through the air and into my head. But it doesn't work like that. And here's the thing to remember. If I don't change my actions today, then my advice to myself won't change. If I don't make a change today, then in 10 years in my future, I will be wishing I could come back to this time and talk to my present-day self. And the message would be, spend less, save more. And the same thing is true for all of us. What you would tell your past self if you could travel back in time is the same thing your future self would tell you today if you don't start to change today. Spend less, save more. Argue less, love more. Worry less, pray more. Fear less, step out in faith more. Hesitate less, act more. Borrow less, give more. Begrudge less, forgive more. Complain less, praise more. Criticize less, encourage more. But if you don't act now, your future self will be telling you the same thing you're telling your past self. But if you act now, even with small steps, Your life will be different in 10 years. God will help you. That's why Psalm 37.5 says, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him to help you do it, and he will. In other words, do what you can, and God will do what you can't. When my wife and I first came to Africa, we didn't have much of a plan. We didn't know all the details of what we were supposed to do or where we would go, but we did have something better a concrete commitment to the will of God. My wife and I said, we're not leaving till God says go. And we're still here because God never said go. We didn't know how long we would stay, but we didn't allow what we did not know to keep us from doing what we did know. Paul had the same experience. Listen to his story in Acts 20, 22 to 24. And now I'm bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know What awaits me? Except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Paul didn't know the details of his future. He said, I don't know what awaits me. But regardless of the details, he was determined to live his life surrendered to God's plan. He was determined to reach his destination and finish the work God had given him. So he didn't allow what he didn't know to keep him from doing what he did know. He didn't know the details, but he knew his destination. He knew that if he kept traveling steadily on God's path, he would come to the end in victory. That's why at the end of his life, Apostle Paul wrote these words in 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8. My life is being given as an offering for God. The time has come for me to leave this life here. I've fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I've served the Lord faithfully. Now a prize is waiting for me. The crown that will show I am right with God. The Lord, the judge who judges rightly, will give it to me on that day. Yes, he will give it to me and to everyone else who's eagerly looking forward to his coming. You may not know where you're going or what the future holds, but when you commit yourself to the God who holds the future, then you can be sure he will lead you.
You see, you don't need the faith to finish. You just need the faith to start. God will meet you as you go. That's the lesson we can learn from one of my favorite stories from the world of sports, the amazing story of Stephen Bradbury. Stephen Bradbury is an athlete from Australia who competed in the 2002 Winter Olympics. He wasn't given much hope of winning a medal, but surprisingly, he did well enough to make it to the final in his event, the 1,000 meter speed skating race. At the final, there were four other skaters competing against Stephen Bradbury. The other skaters were all better than him, and no one gave Stephen a chance to win gold. In fact, as the skaters entered the final lap, the American and Chinese were out front with the Canadian and Korean skaters hot on their heels. Stephen trailed behind, obviously destined for last place. As they came around the last curve for the final straightaway stretch, everyone in the crowd stood to their feet, yelling and cheering for their favorite to win Olympic gold. But suddenly, the Chinese skater bumped the American and sent both of them careening into the wall as they spun out of control. With no time or space to get out of their way, the tangled mess caused the Canadian and Korean skaters to also spin out of control and join them in a tangled heap of arms and legs. But Stephen Bradbury was so far behind, he didn't get caught up in the collision. He was able to look ahead and see the danger and avoid the mess. He was able to skate past everyone to win the race. As he crossed the finish line, he shouted, Gold! I won the gold! Stephen Bradbury had come from nowhere to pass everyone and win the race. He was not the fastest. He did not set any records. He won the gold for no other reason than he crossed the finish line. He finished the race. He just simply didn't quit and didn't get tangled up in the mess and the distractions around him. And that's how it is for you. When you have Jesus in your life, when you simply keep focused on your destination and don't get sidetracked or distracted, you will finish your race. You will cross the line and end in victory. You may not have started well. You may have been in last place. Everyone may have counted you out. But a successful start doesn't guarantee a successful end. To get successfully to the end, you have to surrender to God's plan. You have to sacrifice and be patient. For when you keep your focus on your destination, God will help you get there. Don't get distracted. Don't lose sight of your destination. Stay on the right road. Keep traveling steadily on the path of faith. And in due season, God will honor you with every blessing. Do what you can, and God will do what you can't. He will take you from the back to the front. He'll give you a wonderful future. Just start today. Keep steady. And you will have a happy ending. And that's how to predict your future. Father, I pray for everyone watching and listening today that your spirit will take the truth. Let it sink deep into our hearts. Let it take root and bring forth fruit to change that in 10 years we will look back on this moment and say, Lord, the changes and decisions I made that day have impacted my life for good. I bless your people now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. We are so glad that you could join us today for Truth For Today. We trust that the message and our ministry is a blessing to you today. Here's how you can get more from Pastor Whitcomb. So here's the truth you need to pack up and take home. Take this message deeper by watching the sermon again on YouTube. There are many life-changing sermon videos by Pastor Whitcomb you can watch or download for free. Simply visit youtube.com to find Pastor Richard C. Whitcomb's YouTube channel and subscribe. Don't trade what you want most for what you want in the moment. You can also find the sermon notes and daily devotional for this and other sermons by visiting Pastor Whitcomb's website at pastorrichardcwhitcomb.com. Vision is vital vital to your victory. Receive daily inspiration by following Pastor Whitcomb on Twitter at RevRCW. Like and follow Pastor Richard C. Whitcomb on Facebook for more inspiration.
Let us know how this broadcast has changed your life. Send us an email to testify at agapehousegana.org. Send your prayer request to prayer at agapehousegana.org. Find out more about the ministry of Agape House New Testament Church by visiting agapehousegana.org or Agape House New Testament Church on Facebook. God bless you. Next week on Truth For Today, Pastor Whitcomb continues his series, How to Predict Your Future, with a sermon entitled, Guaranteed Returns. Here's what to look forward to. should not miss this for anything in the world. On behalf of Pastor Whitcomb and all of us here at Agape Gospel Mission, we say thank you for tuning in today. We look forward to being with you again next week. Until then, stay blessed and have a wonderful week.